Hey guys, this video is going to be about medical school admissions, and I just want to share all the information that I learned when I was in undergrad um, to help you all because I initially thought that I was going to go to medical school. So I just want to kind of help you all and give you information that I have accrued over time, and hopefully it will help you to save some time and to make some really informed decisions. So I have a, a list of things here just so I don't forget, and um, if I look down, that's why I'm looking down. So the first thing is your major. You want to think about what do you want to major in. When you go to college, a lot of times you think that if I'm going to go to medical school, I should major in biology or chemistry, and you can do that, but that's not, um, it's not mandatory. You can major in whatever you want to major in. And I think you should really think about what do you like, what do you find interesting. You can major in theater, psychology, sociology, mathematics, it doesn't matter. Whatever your passion is, is what you should major in. As long as you take the pre-med classes, then you'll be um, set up to do well in your MCAT and to apply for medical school. So uh, don't forget that. Major in whatever you want to major in. And also, I've read and have been told by professors and advisors that sometimes it's good if you're not a biology or chemistry major because a lot of times medical schools want their classes to be composed of dynamic individuals with varied interests. And um, it could probably work to your advantage if you're one of those people that are interested in other things besides biology and chemistry. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but you don't have to major in that to get accepted into medical school. The next thing is volunteerism. Um, when you are applying to medical school, they want to know what your interests are, what your hobbies are, and what do you do besides make good grades. So I think it's really good to volunteer. You get a better feel for you as a person, how you interact with people, so it can help build your interpersonal skills and communication skills as well. You can volunteer at free clinics, hospitals, your doctor's office if you can. A lot of times your college will have information um, about the community that your university is in and the needs of that community. So a lot of times I can help you to get really purposeful volunteer assignments. The other thing is um, alternative spring break. A lot of universities participate in alternative spring break and basically you can choose for the week that you have break to go to another country. Maybe you want to help with Habitat for Humanity or maybe you are more interested in doing a more medically driven um, trip and a lot of times schools offer that to their students. So that's a great way for you to show, in addition to the other things that you do to give back, um, that you do care and that you are really committed to medicine. Um, another thing is homeless shelters. Depending on where your college is, you may be able to volunteer in those arenas, um, free clinics, I don't know if I said that already, and then the other one um, is hospitals and doctor's offices. Depending on what you want to do, if you think you want to be a surgeon, then I think it would be good for you to attempt to maybe shadow a surgery. Um, you want to kind of test drive it and see what they do every day and try to match um, what they have to do in their skills and their knowledge and just the way their day runs to your personality. Is that something you could see yourself doing? day in and day out, um, the stresses, the, en the enjoyment of it, the rewards of it, is it something that you want um, to deal with? Because medicine can be very stressful, the responsibility can be very great, and it's a huge sacrifice on your life to be a physician. So you have to be realistic and think, is, is that something that you really um, you know, are willing to do? The next thing, the cost of applications. I don't think that people when they're freshmen that they initially know how much it costs to apply to medical school and all of the expenses that go along with that. So the first thing is the cost of the applications. Um, this can be true for um, when you go to school to be a physical therapist, an occupational therapist, physician assistant, um, dentist, if you want to get an MPH and go to a public health school. A lot of times there's like one central application and you pay per um, you pay like a flat fee for your first application and then every application after that may be 40 additional dollars or 50 additional dollars. It just depends on what specific program that you're going to do. Um, so the applications cost money. You have to think about the interview cost. Are you applying to schools in state or out of state? How do you plan on um, getting transportation to those schools? And are you going to stay in a hotel? Are you going to get a rental car? If you fly in, you know, you have to think about all of those things and the expenses that go along with it. And I'm not telling you this to depress you, but I just want you to be aware of the finances that it takes to apply to medical school and to go to your interviews. Um, 
once you get your um, interview um, notices in the mail that you have been uh, selected to have an interview at the medical school that you've applied to, you want to make sure that you've done the best that you can to prepare yourself for an interview. And to do that, a lot of times they have books on medical school tips, how to get into medical school. There's so much information about it. And you can probably find it at the library. That way you don't have to spend your own money since you're already spending so much money on everything else. And that can probably help you a lot to feel more confident in your interview. You know what to expect. Maybe um, you can get a better idea for the type of questions that you might be asked. Um, when I had my interviews, I didn't have medical school interviews. I actually had interviews for physician assistant programs. I applied to three schools, and I got two interviews. I got waitlisted. I didn't end up going. But um, the interviews, one interview um, set was basically like a, um, they gave us a scenario, they put us in a group, and they asked us a question. And we discussed the question together, and one of the faculty from the school sat in the group amongst us and observed our answers to the questions. The other interview was very different. It was more like um, an orientation. They showed us around the university. They showed us um, the labs where the students learned, the library, the lecture halls. They answered our questions, and we um, we had like a written form. It had questions on it. We had to answer those questions, and then we went in and had an interview with some of the faculty from the school. They asked us questions. Um, we had the opportunity to ask them questions, and the interview was over. So I guess, you know, you can look at it as one-on-one -on -one interviews and group interviews. The first one was a group interview. That was a school that was in Florida, and the, the other interview was a individual interview, and that was a school that was in New Jersey. So I hope that it's helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. This is meant to help you. It's not like the final word and how to get into medical school, but this is just um, a good idea. And the big takeaway is major in what your passion is. You know, you may find that three years down the road, four years down the road, maybe you have changed your mind, and you want to be able to use your degree to earn a living and to do something that you feel is important um, to the world, but also important to you. And if your passion is in biology, and you don't want to be a biologist as a backup if you can't go to medical school, then it would probably be um, in your best interest to major in something that you really care about and you really love. So with that being said, good luck in your endeavors. If there's anything I can do to help you, um, please let me know. Send me a comment, um, or you can direct message me, however that works here on YouTube. Um, I will talk to you guys later. Have